You just watched episode 5 of Lovecraft Country and you desperately need to talk about the spoilers, the theories, discuss what exactly happened at the end of this episode. Well, don't worry, you are in the right place. Welcome to JBox Studios, your home for reviews, reactions, and ridiculousness. And yes, we are getting in depth on this episode 5 of Lovecraft Country called Strange Case, and man, this was a definitely strange episode for sure, but before I get into my spoiler-free and then spoiler thoughts, let me know what you guys thought of this episode down in the comments down below. Let me know kind of what theories you have, what things really stood out, what things did you see coming and finally got that big reveal for. I want to know in the comments down below. Anyways though, getting into the spoiler free thoughts of this episode, this is maybe my favorite episode so far because it is strange, it is weird, it is very much tackling those racial tensions at this time in the 1950s and really shows two sides of things. And again, not getting into spoilers, but this is very much Ruby's episode and I think she does a wonderful job of leading us through this episode of being this conflicted person of sense being on one side from where she is from but also seeing the side of something else potentially again no spoilers but I love the special effects in this kind of you know that Lovecraftian weird lore and whatnot that they dive into and kind of more of the reveals and this is a wonderful fifth episode very middle of the series of what the hell is going on, where is this series gonna go, and this was almost like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde type episode. Now, now, getting into the spoilers of this episode, if you don't wanna know anything, like this video, comment down below, come back after you've watched episode five. But there is a handful of little things that are going on, but one big thing, and like I mentioned, this is very much Ruby's episode, so we'll get into her in a little bit later, but coming from episode 4, A History of Violence, the very end, you know, obviously Montrose kills Yahima, I believe, that woman that's a siren. And the very beginning of this episode starts off with Tick and Letty and Montrose being at odds essentially because Montrose killed the one lead that they had the one person that potentially had information that they needed so Tick and Letty are obviously against Montrose wondering why he did this and I'm still saying there's some sketchiness to Montrose's character what is he hiding what exactly does he know that they don't want to know and we don't get much of that in this episode but we find out that boom that kind of fractures the relationship that they have going on and it leads Montrose onto his kind of own side story in this episode. And you get the hint that was talked about, yeah, I believe Tree revealed it in episode 4, of Montrose and Sammy at the bar kind of having this friendly relationship. And you find out Sammy is another man, and it's kind of a drag bar, you know, but very much kind of in the gay community and... Montrose is very much involved with Sammy and they have a sexual relationship and whatnot But you find out that the reason I think that he was drinking in the previous episodes and very much having this conflicted personality is because he doesn't want to be the person that he wants to be or is you know he is a gay person and he loves Sammy but he is not kissing him so throughout this episode it's very much him almost holding back, not accepting who his true colors are. Almost the the metaphor of metamorphosis in this because that plays in with Ruby and it very much plays in with Montrose as well. And when that one scene of at the drag show and they lift him up and he's dancing and whatnot, you can see that he finally uh, blossoms, I guess, into a butterfly of being this conflicted, you know, I don't want to be who I am, to finally accepting himself, accepting Sammy and you know, kissing him and falling in, essentially in love with the character. So Montrose, that is kind of why I think he's kind of been this bitter older man in the previous episodes because he has this secret that's very much illegal at this time in America and hiding it from uh, Atticus and Letty that he doesn't want them to know about. So now I think that he is very much comfortable in his own skin, which hint, hint, plays in something later. So I think Montrose, that is his storyline of, you know, accepting who he is and, you know, accepting that Sammy and him now have this relationship together. But aside from those two smaller storylines, this main storyline is Ruby and William and her transformation. So you find out that William, you know, 
hooks up with Ruby, but has kind of this conflicting thing with her. She has, he has some sort of agenda with her character and offers her this little tiny potion. Now this potion transforms her into a white woman. So you can see the metamorphosis again because there's a, a, a quick scene where William is talking about, you know, a caterpillar and a butterfly and they came from different cells, but they're treated completely differently. And you can see how he sets this up to give Ruby the chance to live as a white woman and you find out that she does that. And she finds out that she doesn't have to be scared. She can go and do things. She has people looking at her. She can go into stores and try outfits on. It's very much seeing the other side of things at that time. And then also getting a job at the department store that she was not allowed at. And also being kind of a more strict boss to, I believe, Tamara, the only colored woman that's working at the department store that, you know, was shown in previous episode episode four so ruby is essentially at this crossroads of oh i can turn white and my life is a little bit easier actually a lot bit easier at this time in america i can get a job i have friends i have no one yelling at me i can go and do what i want and you can see how it's good and bad but the thing is as the episode continues she's almost getting addicted to it it's very much like this drug of choice essentially and also you find out that as being a white person, it's really not cracked up as much as she wanted or hoped it was because you find out that they are just scummy, awful people that she's working with and they're using Tamara to then go to a bar on the south side and whatnot. And through this other kind of storyline and such, you find out that the reason Tamara was essentially hired was because the boss was essentially a creep. And more than likely, he did something sexual with her because, you know, there's that scene at the bar where he goes into the alleyway and tries to force himself onto Tamara. So you can see that that's more than likely how she got the job. And we'll get into it a little bit later, but Ruby obviously takes care of that at the very end of this episode but the reason William is giving this potion to Ruby is he needs her to essentially do something to find some document I believe from Lancaster that police officer or police chief from the last couple episodes and there's this party and essentially Ruby is kind of you know dressed up as an old uh, waitress maid and whatnot servant essentially at this party but then goes into Lancaster's office to try to find things but then Lancaster comes in so she jumps into the closet which there's still that dead body or that moving body that is somehow kept alive in the closet we haven't gotten much more of who that is what is going on with that so I'm very curious about that because Ruby is hiding in there but you find Lancaster talking to a couple other people and he takes his shirt off and it looks like he's almost got this different colored skin like he's I don't know exactly what it is honestly to myself it looked like gorilla skin kind of like the guy from uh, Umbrella Academy but it might be burnt it might be uh, like fractured or something from some accident I don't know or maybe hell he took a potion and he's changed as well but who knows something is amiss about Lancaster because again they're trying to hide the order of Adam and that uh, outer space a solar system artifact from him so I think that he has a bigger piece to go on with the next couple episodes and obviously him and William are very much uh, against each other now leading into the last like five ten minutes of this episode uh, so Ruby aka transformed as the white woman which again the special effects and the way that everything is peeled off of her is fascinating and disgusting and awesome but she goes in to talk about her, talk to her boss and very much she knows that he is kind of uh you know doing things uh very inappropriately sexually with his uh co-workers so she is like i'm attracted to you blah 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 ties him up and then treats him the way he treats women aka teaches him a lesson by doing one of the most heinous acts that we have seen in this episode something very graphic she takes off a high heel and <laughs> does that in his pooper quite a few times and my god if you have seen this episode it is tough to see but almost almost satisfying to see that this guy is getting what had come to him because ruby is you know as this white person and she finally realized through this episode of like 
hey, I am given this power as a black woman now in a white person's body. How do I use this to essentially better everyone? And she finds that by the end of this episode, instead of just using it to her advantage, she is using it to essentially get over on this guy and help people in the future, the other co-workers, the females in the future of watching out for this sexual predator, essentially. But then rounding this episode out, we find out that yes, the theory from last week and some people have been saying is that Christine and William are the exact same person using this same formula of sense. Instead of changing Ruby from a black person to a white person, it's changing Christine from a woman to a man because, you know, they always said that the order of Adam very much was sexist and that way she used it to kind of get more of credibility in that sense. So you can find out that these last five episodes and whatnot that yes, the Christine, William, everything that you're seeing them do is the same person. So I'm curious what exactly, again, she wants with that uh, solar system artifact that we didn't get too much more of, but yes, this is very much Ruby's story and a transformation, like someone, a metamorphosis in a sense, living in someone else's skin. So this episode, I mean, with the special effects of the skin coming off and everything, and uh, literally that last scene with the, with the high heel, this might be my favorite episode because it's diving into one single character. We're giving a little bit more pieces of tying everything together, but this was a fantastic episode in my opinion. But what did you guys think of this episode? What little tiny things did I miss? What other themes and whatnot were hidden in this episode? Have you read the book and potentially know more than I do? I want to know in the comments down below because, my God, I am loving this season of Lovecraft Country. We're halfway through. I'm curious what the second half is going to give us. But anyways, though, as always, thank you so much for watching. Watch some more videos up there or right over there. You know, brand new content every single week here on the JBox Studios channel. Tomorrow and the next day, I think I have another Netflix review, so stay tuned for all of that. Otherwise, stay up to date on all of my content by following my social media down there. Like this video. Subscribe to the JBox Studios channel, and until next time, we'll see you later.